All right, hello everybody. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, in this lesson, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about um, picks. I'm gonna be talking to you about how, I get a lot of questions, believe it or not, about picks and um, what are the best ones to use? Uh, how do you hold them? How do you strum with them? Um, that might be something that you, you think, you know, if you're just starting guitar, but that's not going to be an issue. Uh, but once people get into guitar, um, you know, a lot of times you think, oh, I'm going to I'm going to struggle with my chords. I'm going to struggle with strumming. It's very seldom that you think that you're going to struggle, struggle with the pick. Um, but a lot of people do starting out um, struggle with the pick in terms of holding it. Um, a lot of people say that um, it, it either flies out of their hand or um, they it just uh, doesn't feel right. Uh, maybe you started strumming with your fingers and then you try to pick up a pick uh, and you struggled uh, with that transition. Uh, so I want to talk about that. And um, also, uh, you can put any questions that you have um, uh, related to this topic in the uh, chat section, and I'll be happy to answer your questions uh, there. So, um, in terms of uh, brands, the first thing I'll talk about is uh, which pick to use. Uh, in terms of brands, I don't really have a favorite. I just, um, what, what matters more than the brand is the weight um, in terms of thickness, right? Uh, so I don't think a brand has anything to do with it. Um, now, there are different types of picks in terms of, you know, there's like jazz picks and there's all of that. Um, I've never gotten into the different types of picks. I just use the standard, uh, standard picks. Um, I think these are fenders. Yeah, these are fender picks. Um, but again, the brand doesn't really matter. Um, what matters is, is the weight again. Now, um, there are different ranges, um, usually measured in millimeters, but like these, these just have three types that have light, medium, and heavy. Um, and that just refers to the flexibility, the thickness of the pick. Um, and that will determine its flexibility. Personally, I use a medium. Um, that just, that's just what feels comfortable for me. Um, the, a lot of people will determine what type of pick they use based on maybe the genre of music that you like to play. Um, if you do more picking uh, in terms of, you know, soft, soft music where you're picking... If you're doing that kind of music or if you're strumming really hard, that's going to uh, make a difference in the thickness of the pick that you want. What I tell a lot of people in when you're starting out, when you're a beginner and you're just starting, uh, you might want to use the light pick, okay? Um, a light, uh, extra light, something like that. Uh, if you're looking at picks that have the millimeter gauge on them, uh, that's like a, you know a, a one millimeter um, pick is very thick. Uh, and it doesn't bend very much. Um, if you go down from one millimeter to like a 0.5 millimeters, uh, that would be more in the range of like a light, uh, a light pick. Um, so I tell beginners uh, to start off with a light pick, uh, one that has a lot of flexibility to it. And the reason is, is that it's more forgiving. Um, it, if it has more flexibility to it, then uh, while you're strumming, it's gonna bend more, it's gonna give more to your strings. And what that means is if you, if you make any mistakes in terms of how far your hand is away from the guitar, it's, it's not gonna make as big of a difference in terms of uh, you losing your pick. It, it's gonna allow you uh, to you lose your pick less often if you have a lighter gauge pick. Uh, the problem, the, the drawback to the lighter gauge picks is that they, first of all, you can't get as full of a sound from them. Um, also, they have, uh, a lot of times you can hear the slap from the lighter gauge pick as you're strumming through. It's, it, it flexes so much that when it comes off of one string, it slaps onto the next string. And sometimes you can hear that slapping um, when you're using the lighter gauge strings. But honestly, it's, it's, it's very subtle. And um, if you're just starting out on guitar, I think the pros are better than the cons uh, of using the extra light, okay? Um, yeah, so Colton, the, the, um, I would say like a 0.5 millimeter uh, is a good pick to start with. 
um, 0.5 um, going up to, to one millimeter is 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 going to be too thick in my opinion to start with uh, so you want to start off with something smaller um, the 0.7 is I'm sure is fine uh, but again I, I would I would get the uh, the full range uh, and play around with them and try to get the try to start with the, the smaller gauge in my opinion okay now um, when it comes to holding your pick uh, a lot of people hold their pick differently and there's no one way one right way to do it um, but in my opinion uh, the way I hold my pick is I hold it with three fingers and this is kind of like uh, almost like a tripod and you know um, the th three point contact is going to be the most secure so that's what I do I have my first and middle finger and then my thumb on the back okay um, so to me this is this is going to give me the most um, stability while I'm holding my pick Okay, so it's kind of like, again, that tripod setup. okay, with my fingers. Um, so that's how I would hold it. The other thing is you want to hold the pick loosely. And I know that sounds counterintuitive because you feel like if, if you've ever dropped your pick, you feel as though you need to hold it harder, right? You need to hold it tighter. Uh, and if you drop your pick, uh, that means you weren't holding it hard enough. And that's not necessarily the case. If you drop your pick, then it could be that you strum too close to the strings and you've got your your pick so close to the strings that you just it, it just the string pulled the pick out of your hand uh, so it's not necessarily that you are holding it too loosely uh, it's that your your distance from the strings was probably not right uh, and that usually is the case for beginners uh, is that uh, if you drop your pick you you probably need to Get, pull your hand farther away uh, from the uh, from the strings, and it's again, it's we're talking about millimeters here, uh, and that's that's the that's the the range we're looking at, and which is why we make mistakes when we're just starting out. You've got to find that range, uh, and it takes time. Uh, the other thing is, um, I usually hold kind of far back. I give myself a lot of pick to work with here. I'm not holding it like this, where there's only you know. Um, very very small uh, distance between my finger uh, and the pick. Okay, um, so I like to hold it further back uh, and give myself more more pick. Okay, to work with. Um, <clears throat> so that's how I'm holding it. I'm holding it loosely. Okay, I don't want to be strangling the pick and have my hand so tense. And a problem with having your hand so tense is that you're gonna. Uh, you're, you're gonna hit the string so hard that the, that the pick is gonna have a tendency to wanna fly out of your hand because you're so rigid. If you're so rigid, it's like cutting um, against the grain of wood, right? Um, you're gonna get kickbacks. And it's the same thing when you're strumming. If you're, if you're so rigid, uh, you're not gonna be able to flow with your strumming. And you're gonna have a tendency to drop your pick because of that or get your pick kicked out of your hand because you're so rigid, okay? So you got to be able to be fluid uh, and loose. Uh, and that being loose is going to allow your pick to rotate with the flow of your strumming, so to speak, okay? So let me just show you what I'm talking about. If I'm, if I'm strumming down, uh, my pick should be pointing up. It should be pointing away from the flow, all right, so that it it picks um, as it picks, it's it's flicking off and coming like this. If I do it the opposite direction, which I mean nobody ever actually does this, but you can. I'm just exaggerating to get my point across. If I were to pick it this way, you can see how this was. This is going to knock the pick out of my hand because it's going against uh, the flow of my hand. Okay. Um, the problem is uh, th this 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 ends up being a problem if you're so tense your hand is going to be tilted one you know uh, it's not going to be it's never always going to be perfectly perpendicular to the strings and so what happens when you're so tense is that when you're coming you know if your if your pick is kind of um, angled like this you know kind of angled up a little bit when you strum up your pick is going to have a tendency to want to just fly out of your hand right but instead if you're loose when you strum up, your pick is going to do this thing, right? So the more the the looser I am, the more flexibility my strum my pick has on the strings. Okay, 
uh, to do what it wants, basically. So you want to have that. Uh, you want to have that flexibility. You want to stay loose. Okay. Don't uh, don't give in to the feeling that you need to get. You need to hold it tighter, right? Uh, because that's just going to make the problem worse. Um, so you just need to keep your arm fluid. Keep your arm loose. Um, okay. So um, that's that's the that's my tip on holding holding your pick. Um, another thing when it comes with strumming, strumming with strumming with a pick. Again, keep in mind to keep your hand fluid and to rotate the wrist uh, with the rotation of your hand. Okay, with the uh, with the in the direction that you're that you're strumming. Again, I'm over exaggerating here, just so you can see what I'm talking about. But when I strum down, my hand rotates up, my hand rotates down. Okay, so like this kind of movement. Now this happens naturally when your hand is loose and you're doing like this. Okay. Um, so you need to keep your hand loose so that can happen. All right. Um, let's see. So uh, another thing when you're strumming, uh, there's a couple things you can do to help uh, with the distance that your hand is from the strings. Because as I said earlier, that creates a lot of problems um, when you're just starting out is that your um, the distance your hand is from the strings uh, creates a problem Whenever you get too close to the strings, then your pick wants to fly out of your hand, okay? Uh, maintaining the same distance from the strings uh, takes time to learn. And one thing you can do is you can use some training wheels um, or a, a kickstand, so to speak, with your pinky. And I still do this today. When it comes to, uh, especially for uh, songs that I, I'm picking uh, a lot, where you know I'm doing something like this. Okay, I'm doing a lot of picking where I have to be very accurate with uh, the strings that I am I'm hitting uh, and the strings I'm not hitting. So I have to be very accurate. Uh, in that case, I use my pinky and I rest it on the body of my guitar like this. Uh, and what that allows me to do, it gives me a feeler, um, so to speak, uh, as to where my hand is on my guitar. Okay, um, it, it allows me to gauge uh, the distance that my pick is from the strings without having to look at it. Um, I can be over here. I can look over here at my hand and I know where my fingers need to be because that pinky gives me that gauge, right? Um, and, and as you do it more, you begin to get a feel for the stretch that your fingers need to have in order to be at the A string or so on. Uh, and so that, um, Having that gauge, that pinky there really helps. Um, another thing is that you can use the bridge of the guitar with your palm on the bridge. Uh, and, and what that does is it does the same thing. It allows you to have that gauge. So that, um, I'm, uh, again, so that I know where my pick is and how far it is from the strings, okay? Uh, if I'm just strumming like this, I have no gauge as to how far my hand is from the strings. If I'm playing like rock music and I'm playing these power chords where I need to strum all six strings and I need to be loud, then it doesn't really matter because I'm hitting all the strings anyway. Um, and so I can strum like this, right? Um, but when it comes to, you know, a lot of, a lot of chords on the acoustic guitar require you to not play certain strings. So for instance, uh, the C chord, the the low E string is not part of that chord, so I need to not strum it, uh, and that gets really challenging uh, if if you don't have this gauge, like your pinky or your your palm on the bridge or something like that, to gauge the distance. Okay, um, so that's what that's what you can do. It's a little technique you can do just to help you, uh, and you can do it uh, at this stage. Um, even if you get if you're strumming all the strings, you can see my pinky's still moving. Uh, it's not stuck in one spot. It's moving, but it's touching the guitar. Uh, and again, it's just there for me to give me that gauge, uh, the gauge of distance, um, even though my hand is moving around. Okay, 
Um, <clears throat> and so even though I'm strumming all the strings, I still use that pinky uh, so that I don't have to stare at my hand. Um, and so I would, I would do that, use that technique uh, with the pinky on the guitar uh, and it'll help. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Um, let me go through the, the chat here. Um, uh, hi Lopez. I see your, uh, song suggestion. I don't, I'm not familiar with that song, so I can't, uh, do it right now, but I can put it on my, my list to draw from for, uh, future tutorials for sure. Um, can't make any promises, but I'll put it on the list. Okay. Uh, let's see a good Caleb. You have a question for a good suggestion for a video course. Uh, are you talking about lessons, guitar lessons? Um, if that's what you're talking about, I do have a course. I have a beginner course where I do uh, go into the 18 chords and three strum patterns. Uh, you can find out more about that on the website, simplifiedguitar.com. Uh, let's see. Let's see if there's any other questions that I passed up. Uh, Um, uh, yeah, I see a question about scales. I don't have any tutorials, um, on the YouTube channel on scales. I go into it a little bit in, uh, some of the live classes in the beginner course, um, for the students, but, uh, I do plan on doing a, a advanced course as well, where I can go more into scales, but that's a whole nother, a uh, whole nother ball of wax that, I um, don't have time in this lesson to get into, <laughs> but, uh, let's see. Um, Can you time chord changes? Oh, that's a good question, Kevin. How do you time uh, chord changes? <clears throat> so um, one of the most uh, the popular strum patterns is going to be the, you know, uh, let's not say strum patterns. Let's say time signatures is going to be 4-4 four, four time. So uh, most songs, like probably 70% of popular songs are in 4-4 uh, four, four time, if not more. Um, and so if we're, if we're practicing that, and this is a good practice that you can do, um, if you take any chord progression, you can, you can use the song that you're trying to learn, um, and take the chord progressions from that, uh, so that you can overlap your practice here. Um, but let's say we're trying, we're trying to transition from G to C at nine like that. Okay. If we're making that transition, uh, and we're in a four, four time. So let's say we're using the driving pattern. Um, usually what I'll do is after beat four, um, I'm going to start my transition. So while I'm on the and, okay, so we have, this is the driving pattern. One, two, three, four, and, okay. And then we repeat one, two, three, four, and like that. So what I'll do is I'll play my G, uh, and I'll do this very slowly to start. I'll do one, two, three three, four, and, so I'm switching on the and, and then I go back on by one, I need to be on the new chord. One, two, three, four, and one, okay? So if you started off uh, very slow, like that, and try to make your transition between four and one, okay? Um, you have that time in between. And you might say, well, I need to strum up while I'm switching, isn't that going to sound funny? Um, if you're playing really slow like that, it might for, for some chords. For the, in the G chord family, it doesn't matter because down here, uh, these fingers aren't changing. And usually for the up strum, you're not strumming all six strings. You might just be strumming the bottom three or four, right? Um, so let's say, let me give you another example. If I'm, let's say I'm on C, let me think of a big transition. How about um, how about I'm in the E chord family, and I'm switching from E to C sharp, okay? Uh, or A from A. Well, let's go from E to C sharp. So I'm on E. One, two, three, four, and one. Okay. So after four, I'm starting my hand moving, and then by one, I need to be there. Okay. Uh, and yes, on the upstrum, I might be hitting some some notes that aren't necessarily part of the key because I picked my fingers up. Um, but it doesn't matter because when you're playing at full speed, you're not going to be able to hear that. Uh, if there's any, you know, it's going to be lasting for, for less than 
half a second, you know? Um, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, and usually you'll be hitting some chords that are the same. Uh, and another thing, when you're switching, you're not gonna pick your fingers completely off of the, off of the strings. Um, you know, like in this case, I'm sliding my fingers, I'm not pressing down, but my fingers are still touching the strings as I'm sliding up to the next, the next chord. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is it gives me a gauge. The same reason I've got my pinky down over here uh, is that it gives me a gauge as to where I am. I don't want to completely pick my fingers up because then I got to start all over and try to find my place again. Um, I'm only picking up as little as I have to uh, in order to make a transition. Right. Um, so I'm still touching the strings so that I know where I am. Okay. So one, two, three. to E. Okay, at full speed. Okay, so at full speed, you can't tell uh, that if I am hitting a wrong note, you can't hear it. You can't tell that it's there um, because it's just so fast. Okay. Um, awesome. All right. Uh, you're welcome, Bobby. Uh, let's see, how many simplified chords do you teach? Um, Jeffrey, I have a, um, a, uh, a chord cheat sheet uh, that you can get on the website, simplifiedguitar.com. Uh, if you go there, you'll find, uh, you'll find out about it. There's three cheat sheets that you can get, uh, the three-step guide you can get for free. Uh, and on there, one of, those three, one of those three cheat sheets is the chord family cheat sheet. And there are 18 chords. Uh, in there that I recommend beginners learn first um, because you can play literally hundreds of songs with those 18 chords and none of those chords are, are bar chords. It's all, um, you know, regular open chords um, that require no barring. Okay. Um, so that's a great place because of that. It's a great place to start for beginners and it's the G E and C chord families. And with those three chord families, you can play in any major key without having to put your capo higher than the fourth fret, okay? Um, so, uh, and there's also a transposing cheat sheet in there as well so that you can transpose using a capo uh, using those three chord families. So you can literally play in any key uh, using those 18 chords and that, that allows you to not have to learn bar chords in the beginning because I know that that makes a lot of people quit uh, is the bar chords. Um, and so I recommend don't learn bar chords when you're starting because it's going to stress you out and you're going to give up. All right. Pressing down on those strings are hard, is hard enough as it is. Um, and, and it's better if you don't have to do the bar chords in the beginning. Uh, I always recommend that people learn, get some songs under your belt first to get that motivation and that excitement. Hey, I can play some songs. Uh, and that's going to motivate you to keep learning from there. I do say that I, I do recommend that you do eventually learn bar chords because it really opens up the whole fretboard for you. Uh, but don't do it in the beginning um, because it will stress you out and it's going to make it more difficult for you. Allow these easier chords to get you into some songs that you want to play and it's going to build up those calluses on your fingers to where when you're ready the bar chords are going to be easier to learn. Okay so that's what I recommend you do. Awesome. All right well if there's no other questions I'll go ahead and sign out for now and I wish you uh, all the best and I hope, uh, hope you guys learned a lot from this uh, lesson on picks. And I hope to see you all next time. Y'all take care. Bye.